Good afternoon folks and welcome to Son of Dell's live vlog on Saturday the 12th of uh, March. I had to remember the date then. A uh, short vlog today actually. I've got a couple of uh, jigsaws to show you which I've done in the last week. Just a couple of 500 piece ones. I've not really been doing much at all jigsaw wise. Uh, and a bit of a talk about things that have happened in the last week really which basically include um, people passing away. Uh, famous people, not so famous people, friends uh, coming down ill, um, the Ukraine crisis going on and Liverpool winning everything at football at the moment. So yeah, it's um, yeah, it's just a short vlog, but coming up first, I'll just show you my jigsaw gallery. Well, as you saw, I only, I've only done a couple of jigsaws this week. I've not been, uh, like I say, in the frame of mind. I've been playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla. It's got me completely addicted. It's a fantastic game. I would recommend it to anybody who likes the Assassin's Creed franchise or who just likes RPGs in general. Uh, what I love about it is it's massive. You can literally play it. I think I've played something like 27 hours now, and I'm lucky if I've done about 7%, 8%. Uh, and because it's a proper proper bought version, not a hacked version or anything like that, you get access to lots of content that you would normally not get, including you get to go to different countries to do missions, um, France, Italy, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Ireland, uh, the Isle of Skye or Scotland. You get all these missions to do, which you would not normally get if it was a, um, a knocked off game, shall we say. And I have played knocked off games in the past. I won't deny it. I have played them. Um, I've played hacked games before because I haven't been able to afford to buy full version of games. It's as simple as that. And once I have been able to afford to buy the game, I've actually gone out and bought it anyway. So it was basically just like a trailer, if you like. I've, I've, I've enjoyed the game that much. I've been out and bought it. And I've done that with a lot of my games. Um, but uh, yeah, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, definitely worth the money. Uh, definitely a good game to play. Um, like I say, there's a lot of gameplay to it. There's a lot of uh, things you can do on it including you can um, go after an Assassin's Creed a uh, bunch of people who are basically called the Hidden Ones and uh, what you basically have to do is you have to go and eliminate them one at a time yeah like I say it's a very good game there's lots of stuff you can do on it there's a lot of choices you can make as well um, and depending on the choice you make depends how the story goes sometimes you get to choose whether somebody lives or dies or other times you get to choose whether they get banished or all sorts of stuff and sometimes it can have devastating effects, the choices you make. Uh, one particular thing uh, completely baffled me, and uh, I got the answer wrong, unfortunately. And I ended up having somebody killed who shouldn't have been killed, but that's another story. But yeah, it's a fantastic game, very enjoyable. Now, on the flip side to that, I also play a lot of um, phone games, mobile games. Now, I don't know whether you can agree with this if you play mobile phone games, but something really, really knocks me about them. If you're playing a game like I play one called Puzzles and Survival, which is basically a match three, uh, but you have to fight people with it, zombies and stuff like that. Now, the one thing that annoys me about these games, I've played five or six of them now, is the um, Mafia, uh, Mafia, Grand Mafia was another one, is when you're building up your um, town or whatever you're building up and you're on level 10, 11, 12, why don't the people who make these games make it so that people who are level 50, 60 and 70 cannot attack you? Because what chance have you got? If you're a level 12 or 13 and you've got 10,000 men and somebody comes along who's a level 56 and they've got 900,000 men, 
what chance are you going to have? They need to make it so that you can only have attack five above you or five below you. And I tell you what, a lot more people would play these games because the worst thing is when you get up in the morning and you go on the game and you find that somebody's come along who's miles above you, literally 50, 60 levels above you, and they've trounced your place and killed all your men. So you've got to get basically heal them all again, which takes another day. And it puts you off the game, it really does. It makes it really, really tiresome and boring. And that's why I finished Grand Mafia, because it was just happening too often. And there was another one I played as well, which was a city building one, and exactly the same thing would happen. Now, I don't mind if somebody comes along who's, say, level 14, 15, and I'm level 12. That's fair enough. They're only two or three levels above me. I might beat them, they might beat me. But when you've got somebody who's level 50 and 60, it makes the game unrealistic and horrible to play. Because the only people who are going to make a job of it are those people who are level 50 and 60. Because nobody else is ever going to be able to reach them. Because by the time they've reached them, they'll be level 120 and they'll be attacking level 40. So I just, I just think it's pointless. And then what do they get from it? This is the other thing. What do you get from it? If I'm a level 12, I won't go attack a level 1 and say, Yeah, yeah, I beat you. Her. I'll try and attack somebody who's either level 13 or level 11. Because then if I lose, I can say, well, at least I tried and I know what I've got to do to improve my men. But I don't get a kick from hammering somebody who's smaller than me by about 20. I don't see the... It, it's stupid. It really is. And if these game manufacturers are listening to me, do something about it. Make a game where somebody can only be four or five levels above you or four or five levels below to attack you. Because when you are level 12 and 13, or as I am now level 16, and you're getting level 56 and 66 coming after you and attacking your people, you're not going to be able to defend yourself. It's impossible. Whether they're trying to get you to spend money on the game, I don't know, because I'm not spending a penny on a mobile game, not one penny. I don't do that. I won't spend money on mobile games. But a lot of the games I play are what are called idle games, and some of them are really, really entertaining. Like, I've got Idle Magic School, which is basically a Harry Potter game. You can tell a mile off when you're playing it. All the stuff literally links to Harry Potter without saying it is. Um, but that's enjoyable. That's a good one. I've just started one called Idle Restaurant Tycoon. That's a bit slow going. Uh, but the one that's really got me intrigued at the moment is one called Idle IT Tycoon. And basically, you have to um, build a computer business uh, by coming up with ideas and then manufacturing them, designing them, printing them, whatever, building them, and then getting them shipped out to your customers. And it's really cool, actually. It's a slow builder, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing brilliant on it at the moment. But then again, I'm only about level three or something like that. I only started yesterday. Uh, but it's entertaining, enjoyable. You might enjoy that one. It's called Idle IT Tycoon. Um, so, yeah, I'm just recommending these games off my head because a lot of people like these idle games because you can just put them on, come off, go back on six, eight, ten hours later, maybe even the next day. You don't even have to do that. You can go on when you want. And you don't have to fear that when you come back, somebody's going to have battered your place or you're going to be bankrupt or somebody's going to come along and rob you. And uh, that's what I prefer, you see. I like... I like a game where I can relax and play it. I don't want something where I'm going to have to get stressed all the time because that's what's happening with this puzzles and survival. People might say, yeah, but it's just a game. But only people who are not gamers would say that. Trust me, I know this. Uh, what I saw the other day was a bit upsetting. Um, uh, an actress who I greatly admired for a comedy series she was in in the 70s called Open All Hours uh, passed away. Uh, Linda Barron, who played Nurse Gladys Emanuel in the fantastic series. I mean, she was absolutely brilliant in it. And if you don't know about Open All Hours, if you've been living under a rock or you've never heard of the programme, whatever, Open All Hours is basically about a miserly shopkeeper called Arkwright and his nephew, uh, which is played by the brilliant David Jason. He plays Granville. And Nurse Gladys Emanuel is a district nurse who basically is the eye... Uh, sorry, is the apple of the eye of Arkwright and they date each other and they go out, but she won't commit to a relationship because she's still got her mother living with it. And it basically centers around the Scroogey shopkeeper and all his dealings and his, his way of conning people out of money and the various people who come in and shop and Arkwright, uh, sorry, Granville, who's like I say, played by David Jason. He's only young and he is, well, you'd think he was young, but I think he was in his thirties when it was filmed. Um, and he's basically the errand boy he has to do all the dirty jobs like peddling around on this really rusty bike and some of the ideas what Arkwright comes up with to make money are absolutely unbelievable. 
And the brilliant thing is, well, I think it's brilliant, is they actually upgraded it to still open all hours. Uh, and that was only out a few years ago. And it's still, I think it's just finished. And that stars David Jason as Granville. But now he owns the shop and he has basically turned into Arkwright. He is now the Scrooge. He is now the miserly one. And it's about the customers that come into his shop um, and the way that he cons them out of money and he cons them to believe in different tales of different things to make them believe that eating tuna fish is good for your sex life and all the, all sorts of weird and wonderful stuff. And one of the people in he two plays, one of the, um, the customers who comes in a lot, in fact there's two of them, one is Tim Healy, as in uh, Alfreda Zane who played Dennis. Uh, and the other one is Johnny Vegas. He's actually in it as well. I think he plays Cyril, I think. I'm not sure about that. He might play Cyril or Eric. No, he plays Eric. He plays Eric. Um, Cyril's played by an Asian gentleman, but I don't know him. But if you watch the series, you're going to have a laugh. Um, it's far-fetched, don't get me wrong. And it's, it's some of the people in it are, you know, unbelievable characters. But it's really good fun. So these are just a couple of my hobbies, by the way. I love old comedies. And when Linda Barron passed away, it was a bit of a shock because it was only a couple of weeks ago that um, another comedy star, Anna Karen, who played Olive in On the Buzzies, she passed away. Uh, but she passed away in a house fire, apparently, uh, which is not a brilliant, you know. Yeah, as well as famous people passing away, um, also um, friends of uh, me and my family, um, more my family than me really, um, pa have passed away as well. Uh, so it's been a bit of a, a bit of a sad week really. Um, and if you add on top of that the Ukraine-Russia crisis, which it is a crisis, I'm sorry, but um, anybody who thinks it's just going to blow over, it isn't. It isn't. Putin isn't like that. I think he will literally drag this out as much as he can. And I think it's going to end up being the East against the West, which is going to be different. Um, and if he's got that much power that he can do what he wants and just rule any country, you can't let him get away with it. Because if he does it once, he's going to know he's got away with it and he's going to do it again and he's going to do it again and he's going to do it again. And it's very much like Adolf Hitler. And we all know what happened there. But, yeah, it's been, like I say, it's been a bizarre, a bizarre week. Um... Not much has been happening. I know one thing that has been happening is uh, spring is starting to spring early because uh, flowers which are in our garden, um, just in planters, have started coming through. We've already got daffodils through already and some of the other plants are coming through as well. Um, we've got flowers coming up left, right and centre. So, you know, spring is coming. And of course, with spring comes hopefully the nicer weather, which means I'll be able to sit outside and do some filming outside, outside my house on my decking. Um, you know, all this lots to come in the future. I haven't had any jigsaw for this month from Jigsaw Gallery yet. Uh, I have had one thing that I can show you, actually. I've just been thinking about it while I've been sitting here. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of Only Fools and Horses. Yeah, of course you do. Well, this came out and it was a limited edition 50 pence piece. I don't know whether you'll be able to see this or not. I'm trying to get it so that you can see it. Right, I think you can see it there. You can see the trotter van. 50p and then on the back of it it actually says trotters independent trading and it's a limited edition 50p it is actually a proper 50p uh, and it's from a company called the westminster coin collection if i'm not mistaken yeah westminstercoincollection.com there's the address if you're interested and i think that was i think that cost me two pound fifty now people might think well what you paid two pound fifty for a 50p piece for it's only fools and horses and I'm a mad Only Fools and Horses fan, so I collect memorabilia, basically. I collect any coins that come out, uh, ingots, cards, nuggets, toys, whatever. You know, I will collect it because it's Only Fools and Horses. And uh, it's my favourite comedy ever, ever, ever. And it's never going to be changed by anything else. Um, on another note, we also have been watching The Walking Dead. Now, The Walking Dead is a total, total, total opposite of everything I normally watch. This is a zombie survival series, and it's run for 12 series, and we're actually on halfway through series 10. Now, it is bloody, it is gory, it is rough as hell in places. It is not for the squeamish. It is not for anybody who doesn't like blood and guts, because you see plenty of that. But the storyline's really good, and it, what makes it fantastic, I think, is that no character is infallible no character is going to survive any character at any one time could die whether they've been in it for a minute or whether they've been in it from the start they can die at any point they don't leave you 
with just thinking, oh yeah, these are going to survive because they're the main characters. The main characters die in it. Trust me, they all, most of them die in it. They just disappear. Um, they'll get killed by zombies or they'll get shot or they'll get killed by bad people who are in it because there's lots of bad people in it. Uh, just to name a couple, the governor, Negan and uh, Alpha. Them are the three psychos so far um, that they've come across. And I mean psychos. The governor's just nuts. Negan, I'll, I won't tell you anything about Negan because he is one of the best characters in it, I think. I think he's one of the best characters in it. And you, you, when you watch it, you'll be wondering why I think he's one of the best characters. But if you watch it to where I am, halfway through season 10, you'll see why. And Alpha is just a complete and utter psycho. I'm sorry, but she is probably more scary than any woman you could ever imagine to meet, or man for that matter. She is completely off the rails. So that's The Walking Dead, and that's something else we've been watching. Because that's what it's been about, really, filling the time. Because when it's this time of year, there's not really a lot going on. You know, you don't hear of many people coming visit, or you don't hear much being open. Because even Blackpool main town centre doesn't officially open, I don't think, until the 26th, 25th, 26th, which is the weekend of Mother's Day in the UK. And it's funny because on Mother's Day, that's the day that the clocks go forward one hour, uh, which means for that one night, we'll get an hour less in bed, which is quite strange with it being Mother's Day, you know. Um, obviously, I, my mum's passed away now. My mum has passed away. I still remember her on Mother's Day. Uh, but Deb's mum's still here, um, and we do, we do celebrate... You know, we do send cards and a present or whatever um, for celebrate Mother's Day. Um, but we don't, we're not really much on Easter. We don't do Easter, me and my wife don't. We don't go eggs or nothing like that. We don't send Easter cards out. I know some people do, and fantastic if you do. You know, if you celebrate Easter, great. Uh, but we don't celebrate Easter, so it's not something we'll be getting excited about. Uh, what we will get excited about is obviously the 25th of March, which is the Friday is mine and my lovely wife Deb's eighth wedding anniversary. Now, we've been married eight, but we've been together 22. We've been together 22 years in July. And I'm sorry, but some people say, oh, you know, after that length of time, it's like not the same, blah, blah, blah. To me, to me, I couldn't be any happier in my relationship if I tried, to be honest with you. I couldn't. I am literally in a place where if something happened today and the world ended, I would die with a smile on my face because I know that I've got something, you know, that's something special, uh, something that can't be wiped out by a nuclear bomb. It just go on. <laughs> um, I know I'm soppy. I don't care. I've always been an old romantic. Um, I don't know whether I get that from my dad. I've not got a clue what he was like in that respect. I don't know whether he was a romantic or what. Uh, I certainly didn't get any poetry from him, because um, obviously, as you know, I write lots and lots and lots of poetry. I haven't written any for a while, but of course, with it coming up to uh, our anniversary, I'm writing a rather special one for my wife, Dad. So I will read that out at some point after the anniversary. And also, obviously, I normally do a vlog on a Friday. Today, I've done it on the Saturday, because yesterday I was not in the mood to do a vlog at all, and it would have been a complete disaster. Um, and obviously on the 25th, which is also a Friday, I won't be doing a vlog on that day because it's my anniversary, so I won't be doing a vlog. I'll probably either do one the day before or the day after, depending on what happens. Uh, with my family and everything what's going on, uh, people aren't doing too bad, actually. My uh, sister, Paula, is the one who takes me uh, and my wife step shopping on a Wednesday. She takes us both to Aldi and b and and the one thing we have noticed is the rise in prices and the ability or inability to get certain things. Now, you might think, okay, fair enough, certain things will be hard to get, you know, Europe and the war, Russia and all this crap. But so one of the things that we are finding very, very hard to get is pedigree dog food for our dog because she will only have either jelly or loaf and we cannot get it anywhere. Um, my wife went and pets at home and even they hadn't got any. Bear in mind, that's pets at home. They are a pet place. And even they hadn't got any. They said they cannot get it from the manufacturers at all. So at the moment, we're struggling to get dog food more than anything, uh, which is bizarre when you think about it. Uh, and the other thing which we've been struggling to get, which I need, um, is a thing called Actimal. Now, what Actimal is, it's a little drink, a bottle of yoghurt like that. And basically, 
because of my problems I've got with my stomach and my digestion, I have to have this thing, uh, this Actimel, because what it does, it puts live cultures in my stomach, which kills the bad bacteria, which keeps my stomach nice and level. If I don't have Actimel, I will start getting really, really bad acid. I will be starting to be sick again. I will feel nauseous and it will literally turn me inside out again. And I don't fancy doing that. Now, when we went shopping the other day, we couldn't get any. We couldn't get any in B&M and there were certainly none in Aldi. So luckily, luckily, my sister Paula, who is an absolute godsend, was able to go to Morrison's and then somewhere else, I think, I can't remember where, I think she went to the big Morrison's, I think, near where uh, her son lives, and she managed to get me a 12-pack of Actimel, so I know I'm okay for the next 11 days now, because I've took one today. Um, but when you think that something like that, what people need for their health, um, and, and it's, it's in short supply, you know, it's, it's, it's very weird. Anyway, I have now talked your ears off, which I'm sorry about. But I told you it was a short vlog, uh, it's a 20 minutes or so. So I'm going to do another vlog in a week's time where hopefully I'll have a jigsaw to unbox and some other stuff as well. So you all take care and I will do another vlog a week today. Bye for now and keep watching.